August, 1643. The parliamentarians are getting restless. Their attempts to breach the walls increasing with an unsettling frequency. By the West Bailey, the hillside is overrun. Least steep and easiest to ascend, it takes nearly all of the castle's garrison to hold the defense. This leaves Mary here in the inner ward almost entirely on her own. The first scaling ladder hits the top of the north wall. Only meters from where you stand now, it makes a sickening crack, followed by another, then another, then another. Mary wastes no time waiting to see what might follow. Together with her maids and daughters, she throws stones and hot embers at the climbing soldiers below. Screams fill the air as they lose their purchase and plummet to the ground beneath them. For the soldiers who nearly make it to the top, the fall is deadly. When the siege is over, the parliamentarians have lost 100 men. Corf's own garrison has lost only two. Tales of brave Lady Mary, outnumbered, outgunned, and a woman no less, fill royalist newspapers. Mary's husband, John, visits the castle to celebrate her victory. Their 14th and final child, William, is born nine months later. But celebrations are short-lived. In December 1644, John falls dangerously ill with fever. For a month, Mary refuses to leave his bedside. When he dies, William is only six months old. By the time a second siege befalls Corfe Castle, Mary ensures that this time she's far away with her children. It's July 1645, and loyalty to the royalist cause is waning. When Corf does fall, it isn't force that takes it, it's betrayal. In February 1646, royalist turncoat Lieutenant Colonel Pittman sneaks 120 parliamentarians through a sally gate, right here in the North Wall. It only takes a matter of hours for the castle to surrender. In March 1646, an order is passed to demolish the castle, and Mary can do little as her home is stripped mercilessly of her possessions. Though there are many in Parliament who would see her beheaded, she petitions tirelessly for years to regain her estate and reduce the penalties levied against her. Against the odds, her determination pays off. As a testament to her bravery, the parliamentarians present Mary with the keys to the castle gates. You can see them today displayed proudly at Kingston Lacey. They show how a small act of defiance can create a legend so powerful it can outlive even the most impregnable of fortifications. <laughs>